Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and this is part number four I believe where we're going to talk about setting the baseline for the acceleration circuit. Now if you haven't seen the previous episodes don't worry about it we will drill back down into all the components that are making up the acceleration circuit. But before we start I'd like to address a couple of points from previous videos. Because I got some comments from some of you and one of the comments was on the yoke size. When we calculated the yoke size, one of the subscribers said, well, your yoke is way too small because according to this book, it should be this. Well, yes, that might be right. I don't know what the book is about, but when I calculate the yoke, it's based on a formula and I've given you that formula. I also then have some practical experience on using and selecting yokes and don't forget the yoke that we are selecting or having calculated is really all about setting a baseline and a baseline is a starting point for tuning. So maybe in that book that the subscriber had, maybe there was already a tuned yoke, not a baseline. Another subscriber referred back to the main jet that the main jet sizing and the air correction jet was not correct for the type of engine that I had or for the type of volume that my cylinder had. Again, here I'm talking about a baseline, a starting point to do further tuning. Engines are always very specific. Maybe the engine is tuned, maybe it has a special cylinder head, maybe it has a special intake manifold, or it may even have a very fast camshaft. Maybe it has a 340 degrees, 320 degrees camshaft with lots of overlap. All that will have an effect on the jetting of your carburetor once you start tuning it. But again, I've provided you with a standard baseline that will work in most cases very well as a starting point for further tuning. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, then don't worry about it. We will drill back down on the components that are making up the acceleration circuit on the DHLA carburetor. We'll also have a little drawing on the board explaining on how it works and then we're getting into the actual sizing and what to check for once you start to define the baseline for your acceleration circuit. So without any further ado, let's have a look on the carburetor on all the different components that make up the acceleration circuit. So here we have the carburetor and Inside, behind the butterfly, you actually have the accelerating jet sticking through the barrel. And the acceleration jet, we have access from the top. If I flip this over, you see this screw right here. We can remove this, and there's one for each barrel. And inside, we have the acceleration jet, and we'll do that in a second. In the back, we have what we call the acceleration pump. Uh, this is also based on a membrane and the lever that's going to push the membrane in. But even inside the main fuel chamber, we are having something special. It's a ballast weight and a little steel ball and a little spring. We have one acceleration jet per barrel. Sometimes it's a bit hard to get it out. Oops, it came out. And let's have a close look what this is all about. The deassembled acceleration jet has a cap. There's a little hole on the side. There is a seal. And then we have what we call a filter. So this is not a spring. This is a filter. And then we have the jet itself. Now the jet can have an opening on the side. Then we talk about a horizontal jet. But it can also have the opening on the tip facing downwards and then we talk about a vertical jet. It depends a bit on your specific carburetor but on a DHLA you typically have the horizontal type. This fits together in a very simple way and you can get different jets for different applications. The more generic jet is between 35 and 40. Okay, so now that is assembled and now we can fit it back in the carburetor. Also, pay attention that you cannot fit it wrongly because there is a flat side on the jet itself. So the hole is always facing towards the intake manifold. The next part we're going to look at is the little ballast weight and steel ball together with the spring. And this is going to act like a 
valve basically avoiding the bleeding out of the acceleration jet whenever the uh, membrane pulls back inside the acceleration pump. Okay. Underneath those two screws, we have those ballast weights and the little ball and the spring. We can remove those easily, but pay attention once you flip it over that the ball doesn't fly away because the ball is very small and it's easy to lose. So this is the top cover that goes off. And inside we actually have the weight. I'm going to flip it over and hold it in my hand. And hopefully that little ball comes out properly. Whoops, and it all already runs away, but here it is. So this is the stop. This is the ballast weight with the little spring and the ballast weight comes basically in three sizes, but they are very hard to get. And then the little ball is right here. And this ball is about, I would say, well, three, four millimeters. And it is sitting on the bottom and it's used to seal off the opening. But you'll see more on that on the board. And on the bottom of the carburetor, we have the acceleration pump together with the lever, the activator. So we can take this apart and also have a look what's inside. This is a small spring which is pushing back the membrane and then the membrane is sitting on top of that. So now we will be able to push it in and out to actually pump fuel. The membrane sometimes gets ripped, so this is always something to be checked. So let's put that aside. Also the little spring that goes with it. And now we can have a closer look inside the uh, pump house, let's say. There are two openings there, which are going to be important. And I'm going to flip it over so you can really see it. So the membrane is going to sit like this and it can move up and down. You will notice that there are two holes in it. One hole is to feed the acceleration pump from the fuel chamber and the other hole is actually feeding it back towards the acceleration jets through those weights I've just shown you. And here it is. There's not much to it. So here we have the bottom side of the carburetor and we have two holes. There's one there, there's one there. These holes are feeding straight through into the fuel, into the fuel chamber. Fuel will come out through those holes and it will fill up this cavity and that fuel will then get through a one-way valve, which is this one right here, into the acceleration pump housing. Whenever the membrane is depressed, then fuel will be squeezed out over this channel, out of this hole, into this pipe here or this channel and this channel leads towards the acceleration jets through, of course, the ballast and the little steel ball channel. So here you have it, all the parts that are making up the acceleration circuit. The only thing that I don't have is the acceleration pump cover with the lever, but we have the membrane and the spring. We have the pump housing together with the one-way valve, which allows fuel from the fuel chamber to come into the acceleration pump, the gasket for it, and then fuel leaves that into another channel where we have on the bottom this little steel ball, a small spring, and the ballast weight and the top cover and then from there on the channel the fuel travels alongside towards through the channels through the acceleration jets for which we have a top cover we have a filter and then we have the actual jet so now let's go to the board and see on how that works and start putting up some figures so here we have our acceleration circuit we are having a fuel chamber which is filled with fuel and fuel will actually get through a one-way valve which I shown you just a minute ago into the acceleration pump so fuel will be sitting in here fuel cannot get back because it's a one-way valve so if we depress the membrane then fuel only has one way out which is this way it can't get out that way because the valve will block it Fuel will then come through the internal channel and when the pressure is high enough, this little steel ball will move upwards. 
it will compress a bit the spring. The ballast might even be pushed further up, allowing the fuel to get out through the internal channel into the acceleration jet. It gets filtered by the filter inside the acceleration jet and then finally the fuel is going to squirt out into the barrel or into the intake manifold through the jet opening. Whenever we are at the end of the acceleration, then the pressure falls away on the fuel and obviously the steel ball is going to drop back down under the force of the ballast and the spring. And this is very important because the membrane, as soon as we let the throttle go, will be pushed up again. And when it does that, it has kind of a suction effect. And that suction effect should actually get fresh fuel back into the fuel, into the acceleration pump. You don't want to get fuel back this way. That would be very bad. And this is why this little ball is there, together with the spring and the ballast. So, in other words, this channel here is almost always going to be filled with fuel after the first time we have accelerated with the acceleration pedal been pushing it down. So this is in essence how this is working. So now the question is, well, how are we going to size that? Well, there's a couple of adjustments that will have to happen, but we'll talk about this once we get into the tuning. Of course, there is a lever here and there's a little adjustment nut, right? So, and there's a rod sticking, sticking through it. So the rod should always be below, should always be below 80 uh, millimeters. If it's more than that, then it's not, it's badly adjusted. And that's gonna determine how much the membrane will go up and down. That's one thing. The other thing we can actually correct is the ballast, really. Uh, there are three types of that. So you have three types of ballasts but they're very hard to get. I think you get lucky if you can get one type today. So then the real thing we can play with is the acceleration jet. And the acceleration jet is gonna have a certain opening here. And there are a whole bunch of types of openings. Um, a good starting size is between 35 and 40. And that actually means between 0.35 millimeters to zero, uh, 40 millimeters. So this would be the size of the opening. And now your question will most likely be, well, which one should I fit? 35 or 40, maybe a 33, whatever. Well, that's going to depend on a couple of things. I can't really give you the exact dimensions of the acceleration jet, but between 35 and 40 would be a good starting point. It is always good to do a square test. I have the carburetor set up and I'm just going to pour some fuel inside. Otherwise that won't work. Oh, I placed a piece of paper here so we can see how far the squirt will be. So if we give a good throttle, the squirt should be about one meter long for about one second. Let's look on a delayed shot. I've set the timer and I delayed the video with 10. Timer started at 06 seconds. And it's going to end up at 16 seconds. So that is 10 seconds. If divided by 10, that's one second. So that's exactly what we wanted to have. I also have a meter up so I can check how far it sprays. And it actually sprays a little bit over one meter, which is quite all right. Now, I know the right hand or the left hand barrel when you're watching it is not working because I have removed actually the jet. So that can't work. So it's only the jet on the right or your right that's going to work in this uh, test. And if you have a squirt which is about one meter long and it should take about one second, then you have a pretty good operating acceleration system. That's why you should see it should not drip. It should stop at the end and it should start properly. That's one thing. Now, in terms of size of the acceleration jet, I recommend you would start with a 35 or a 40 and then accelerate with the car. If you see black smoke coming out of the exhaust, then it, you are running way too rich. Uh, the car might even hesitate a bit, but then it will pick up slowly. So that is a sign of running too rich or having an acceleration jet, which is too large. If your car hesitates all along, then in essence, you don't have enough fuel being injected or squirted into the intake manifold. So then you have to go a step up on the uh, acceleration jet. This is in essence how simple that really is. 
obviously you have to make sure that the membrane is working properly, that the ballast is working and that the little ball is working. Under no circumstances should your acceleration jet ever be dripping. So folks, we have come to the end of this video and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.